Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss some important and tricky questions from March 2019 Paper 1, Variant 2. In this lesson, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding. The purpose of this video is not to give you solution of these questions. Actually, the main purpose of this video is to help you to improve your conceptual understanding so you can understand real physics. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For this question, it is given to us the speed of aircraft in still air is 200 km per hour. The wind blows from the west at a speed of 85 km per hour. In which direction must the pilot steer the aircraft in order to fly due north? So first of all, we will be using this one as our reference for directions. To the right, we will take east. To the left, we will take west. Upwards, we will take north. And downwards, we will take south for this question it is given to us the wind is blowing from the west mean it is to the east so we can draw arrow for direction of wind so this is direction of wind it is to the east from the west means to the east so we can also label this one this one is wind Speed of wind is given that is equal to 85.0 kilometers per hour. So we can also label this. We want aircraft to fly due north. So we can use arrow for that for direction of aircraft. We want our aircraft to go in this direction, in this direction. So now we need to understand if we want aircraft to go along due north, we have to balance this component of wind. So aircraft should have this component of velocity but in opposite direction so we can use arrow for that so aircraft has to fly along this direction so this is direction of aircraft aircraft has to point in this direction so its component of velocity will balance so component of velocity of this aircraft it will balance this wind velocity so this component of aircraft velocity will balance this one so from here simply we can say that this component of aircraft velocity also has to be 85 kilometers per hour so it will be balanced so our aircraft will go along this direction and question is asking us to calculate this angle this angle and the speed of aircraft is given that is equal to 200 kilometers per hour 200 kilometers per hour now we need to under if we complete this triangle you can simply see from here this component are this component they are the same so this component has to be 200 sine of alpha and 200 sine of alpha has to be equal to 85 so simply we can write down in this case 200 sine of alpha this one has to be equal to 85 we need to calculate value of alpha so we can write down in this case sine of alpha this one will be equal to 85 point zero divided by 200 so from here we can find out value of alpha so this will be sine inverse of 85 divided by 200 so we will get value of alpha value of alpha will be equal to 25.2 degrees so this is the angle from north to the west from north to the west and to the west north to the west so this is we can say uh, simply we can say this one is 25 point two degrees west of north so this is another way we can say that angle from north to the west so this alpha is the angle from vertical to the west from n to the west so the answer for this question is d so this is how you can approach this type of problems the key concept is that you need to understand we need to balance this velocity so velocity of the aircraft has to be in the opposite direction but it must have the same magnitude as the speed of the wind and then we can calculate value of angle so this is the key concept i hope this question is clear to you for question number 10 it is given to us two balls of masses m and 2m traveling in vacuum with initial velocities 2v and v respectively collide with each other head-on as shown in the figure 
after the collision, the ball of mass m rebounds to the left with velocity v. We need to find out what is loss of kinetic energy in the collision. So, in order to answer this problem, we need to understand conservation of momentum. First of all, let's try to find out the initial momentum of this system. So, we can write down pi means initial momentum. And we can take, in this case, to the right as positive because momentum is a vector quantity. So, you need to take one direction as positive. So in this case we are taking to the right is positive. So the momentum of this ball is positive. So we can write down this is 2mv plus momentum of this ball. And this ball is moving to the left. So its velocity is negative. So we will say in this case 2m times minus v. So velocity is negative. If we simplify this one we will get in this case 2mv minus 2mv. So it simply means that initial momentum is equal to 0. So the final momentum also has to be equal to zero. So we can write down here conservation of momentum, P initial. This one has to be equal to P final. P initial is equal to zero. Now it is given to us after the collision, the ball with mass M rebounds to the left. So we can write down what is happening after collision. Ball with mass M, this rebound to the left with velocity V. If this one rebound to the left, so it simply means that the ball with mass 2m. This one has to move to the right because total momentum has to be zero. And we need to find out this velocity. We can say this is v prime. v prime we have to find out. So in this case, we are taking to the right is positive. So it means the momentum of this one will be positive. So we can say this is 2m v prime plus momentum of this one. Momentum of this one will be negative because this is moving to the left. So we can say this is negative mv. From here, we can find out v prime. So we will simply say in this case, 2m v prime, this one has to be equal to m v. Now we can divide both sides by 2m. So we have v prime. This is equal to m v divided by 2m, divided by 2m. So this m, we can cancel with this m. So it simply means that the velocity after collision, this is equal to v by 2. So this is velocity of 2m after collision. I have explained you this one step by step, but we can also do this question in a very quick way. We can simply say as momentum has to be conserved, so momentum of this one has to be equal to momentum of this. As mass of this one is double, so the velocity of this one has to be half. So we can quickly answer from here as well. Now we need to calculate the loss of kinetic energy. So we can say delta Ke we need to calculate loss of kinetic energy. And that one will be equal to initial kinetic energy minus kinetic energy final. Initial kinetic energy, we have this ball, it has kinetic energy. So we can say this is one half m. We have 2v square plus kinetic energy of this ball before collision. So we can write down this is one half mass is 2m and the speed of that one is v. So this is v square. So this is initial kinetic energy. Now we need to subtract the final kinetic energy. Final kinetic energy of this ball, we have one one half this is m times v square minus kinetic energy of this second ball mass of the second ball is 2m and the speed of this one is v by 2 so we have v by 2 square now we need to simplify this now if we simplify this one we can calculate the loss in kinetic energy if we simplify this part we will get this is one half m and this one will be 4 v square so this one is 4 v square plus we have this so this is one half we can cancel two with 2. So simply we can cancel this one. So we left with mv square. So this is mv square. We can also simplify this. Uh, simply you can just write down this one half mv square and this 2 we can cancel with this one. So we left with mv square divided by 4. Now, if we simplify all of this, our final answer will be equal to 9 by 4 mv square. 9 by 4 mv square. And this one is our final answer, and this is the loss in kinetic energy. I mean, this one is delta k. So, this is how you can find out the final answer. So, the main concept about this question is first thing you need to understand about conservation of momentum, then you need to understand what is loss of kinetic energy, and you need to understand kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. 
so you no need to worry about direction because this is a scalar quantity so then simply you can calculate the difference in kinetic energies and that is equal to loss in kinetic energy for question number 21 force against extension graph is given to us and we need to estimate the strain energy in the rubber when a load of 80 newton is applied this is very important question you need to understand at this level how to estimate area under a curve at a level and you will see one or two questions about this in your exam every year so let's try to understand this question by using two different approaches we will use two different methods to answer this problem the first method is we can count these squares now if you look at one small square let's say if you look at this one small square you can estimate energy store for this one small square for this one small square for this one small square you can see on y-axis we have 20 Newton's force. So for small square, we can say that this one is the small square. So we have 20. So this is 0 to 20 force. And we have this is 2 to 4 millimeters. This is extension. So we can say this is 20 Newtons and this one is 4 millimeters. So this area, I mean this strain energy we can calculate. So we can say in this case, area of this one is equal to 20 times 2 times 10 to minus 3 because unit is millimeter and this area will be equal to 0 0.0 40 newton meter so this is area of one small square now if we can count number of squares we can calculate total area so we can calculate strain energy and so now we will try to calculate total area total area in this case will be equal to number of squares times area of one square number of squares times area of one square or simply we can say times 0.0 for zero newton meters so now the question is that we need to calculate number of squares if we have number of squares we can simply multiply with this and we can calculate area if you look at this now i have already actually labeled this one so i will simply show you that so we can save some time and we can go a bit faster now in this case you can see this is one complete square this is complete so this is complete so all of them these are complete square but if you look at uh, area of this one this is not complete square but if we take this area this much area we can replace this one so approximately it's the same so we can say this is also one complete square and for this one this is not a complete square we can take this area we can combine these two we can combine these two so then this is also a complete square and if we look at uh, this one 17 so you see this area is missing but we can replace with this one so this is also one complete square for 20 we can add this area we can add this area so this one almost equal to this so we can say this is also one complete square so we have 20 complete squares now the question is this 21 and 22 so this is little bit less than complete square so we can approximate this is complete square and this is also a bit less than we can say this is also a complete square because we just need to estimate we don't need the exact answer so how many squares we have here in total so we have 22 so simply we can write down here we have 22 squares now simply we need to multiply so in this case if we multiply our final answer will be equal to 0.88 newton meters and this is the final answer so this is very important technique by counting squares you need this one for a level you also need this one for as level even you need this one for igcs level so try to understand this technique by counting squares just take area of one square and then count number of squares and you can find the area under curve i hope this one is clear to you and answer for this question will be c so c is the answer now let me explain to you using a different method so i'll be cleaning this one and then i will explain you another method to answer the same problem now let's try to answer this one using a different technique in this method uh, you can see i have estimated this area so this area this area i can say let's say this is area a1 and let's say this area is a2 so you can see here in this case a1 is equal to a2 so these two areas are equal so it simply means that now i need to calculate 
calculate area under this rectangle. So the area under this rectangle is simply equal to 55. 55 times we have this is 16 millimeters. So we have 16 times 10 to minus 3 meters and your final answer will be equal to 0.88 newton meter. So this is an other way. You can draw a rectangle sometimes. You can draw sometimes. You can draw a triangle depending on what kind of curve is given to you. So you can use these two different methods to calculate area under any curve because you don't need to use calculus at this level. When you will go to university level, you will use calculus, calculate area under this kind of curve. But at this level, you simply need to understand how to estimate and this is how you can estimate. So the answer for this question is C.